Oh, this job by a super chemist. First thing I want to do is go over my apparatus. I just set up like refluxing. See how I got my water condenser here. Up on top, I have a drying tube calcium chloride in that's in hydrous. Down here, I'm going to put my magnesium in. And then I have this separatory funnel or equalizing funnel rather. Um, I'm going to put my diethyl ether and my uh, alkyl halide, which in, in this case is uh, ethyl bromide. I'll put that in here and I'm going to drip it in. Okay, this isn't the apparatus, but I wanted to say something that's in the video there. That's equalizing funnel that had the ethyl bromide in it and the diethyl ether. I was going to drip it into the magnesium metal, but I also should have had diethyl ether in there. I didn't put it in there, though, because I was cheap. But anyways, I already did that. When you drip that in, that ethyl bromide into the magnesium, it makes your Grignard reagent, okay? And I already did a video on that, okay? Called uh, Ethyl Magnesium Bromide Grignard Reagent Synthesis, okay? And this is a continuation of that video, okay? Because you can't hold your Grignard reagent. Once you make it, you use it. You can't wait for the next day or a week later. Um, so basically, I already dripped it in. I let it reflux for a half hour, and now I need to switch the hose over. Take the set funnel out, equalizing funnel, and put the hose in its place so I can bubble the CO2 into my Grignard reagent and do a Grignard reaction. Now this part over here, right? If you watch my anhydrous, how to make uh, anhydrous uh, carbon dioxide, um, I should, you know, this is the same exact apparatus. I have my baking soda in here. I'm going to heat it up with an oil bath. It's going to come up here just like a Dean Stark apparatus. It can't get past this condenser, right? The water. It'll drain back down instead of it going into the pot. It'll drain into this uh, little, uh, whatever, that capture thing there. It's going to capture some good stuff. Um, then of course it goes, the carbon dioxide can, can, can get past there, right? So I'll never liquefy it. Goes up to this hose, comes back down to this three neck round bottom flask. I have again calcium, anhydrous calcium chloride in there. So it'll dry any remaining water that made it past the condenser, right? <laughs> Go through this tube and this. This is just a suck back trap right here. Okay. And the tube goes down. Right now it's just going into this bottle here. But what I'm going to do is, after I fill this in, you know, after I'm, the equalizing funnel is empty, all the ethyl bromide is in here, then I can switch this out. I'll take this equalizing funnel out and I will, I don't know if you can see. But there's actually a hose inside here. And it'll it'll go all the way down to the bottom of this flask here. Okay, I let it reflux for a half hour. And now I'm gonna change out the change out the funnel with the uh, tube. Since I'm starting to make the carbon dioxide, I'm gonna have to turn this one on too. Basically, got both of these in series. See, it comes through here and then it comes over here. That way, I got, uh, I just use one pump. Now I'm going to turn on the oil, and I already told you about the, uh, about the uh, carbon dioxide. I'm going to, going to go through here, the hoses, all the way to this. Yeah, I got this hose coming in. Goes down to here. And you can see there's a little tube inside there. Goes all the way down to the bottom. Right there. It's already starting to boil.
that's it. I'm just going to bubble that for probably an hour or until, uh, you know, it stops bubbling. It comes out of here. It's up here. Down here. And it goes into here. So I think it's a suck pipe effect. There's nothing in there. Right? It's an empty jar. It'll get sucked into here. And it can't go past, can't go back into here because there's no tube. So it'll be stuck here. And it, that way it won't go, you know what I mean, be destroyed by going into something like that. Or going into the actual pot. There's the pot. It goes up here. And here's where the condenser is, right? Right here. Now, even though the pot's only at 32 degrees, so nothing should be refluxing, you can see here. See that? It's refluxing. The reason why is because I'm bubbling all that CO2 through. It's carrying some of the vapors with it, some of the diethyl ether with it. So you have to have this condenser still going, you know, while you're bubbling this stuff in. And at the very end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hot water bath on this pot right here, right? Right here. I'll put a hot water bath on that and let it reflux while I'm bubbling in the CO2. Like the last 15, 20 minutes. I'll reflux it, maybe even a half hour. I'll reflux it for a half hour while I'm still bubbling in the last bit of CO2. It's been about 45 minutes or something. You can see this is it's 36 degrees, but it's uh, actually 36.6 uh, Celsius. So this must be slightly exothermic here, adding this uh, CO2. So I'm not going to reflux it at the end, like I said I was going to do. But I wanted you to notice something here. <laughs> Look at all these little spots and stuff on here. See that? They're getting thrown. Up. It's getting thrown up by the. Uh, you know, the refluxing. Um, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that that is, because uh, it's white, I don't think it's the magnesium. <clears throat> I think it's uh, the tetrahedral intermediate salt that is formed. And uh, so that's a good thing, I think, because that's my product. Um, and then when I do my work up and quench it, you know, it'll make the, uh, it'll turn that salt into the acid that I want, propanoic acid. But I thought that was, you know, interesting how there's white stuff here and I'm making a salt, so I'm hoping that's the salt. Now, when I made my Brynjord reagent, I didn't put any diethyl ether in the magnesium, which was a big mistake, because it acts as a heat sink and, you know, it's just you should put it in there. But I didn't have enough, and so I was a cheapskate about it. Same thing with this reaction. I didn't use as much uh, diethyl ether as I should have, you know, so there should be more in there, right? If there was more in there, I don't think that that uh, salt, that tetrahedral intermediate, uh, which is, say, uh, alkyl oxide, I don't think that would be precipitating out like that. I think it would be dissolved in the ether, I think that's the way you're supposed to do it, although I'm not sure. <laughs> but I don't think that that would be happening if I had put as much diethyl ether in as I should have. Um, and this uh, bites me later on at the end of this video. You'll see that it actually uh, solidifies because there's so much solid in there. And uh, But actually, it was no big deal because when I added the acid to quench it, it all, you know, it broke up. Well, it's been two hours, but it's still making white stuff. I'm guessing that's my product. You can see it floating on top. It's all on the sides. This isn't metal. It's white stuff that was made. I'll keep keep bubbling it in, I guess, for another half hour, and then I'm just gonna say screw it. It's two hour, two and a half hours. That's long enough. 
just seems like it's making more and more. It just seems like it's making more and more. <laughs> Alright, like nothing's bubbling through anymore, so I'm going to take this. Oh, did you hear that? I'm going to take this and put it like this. I don't want it to uh, get any suck back. You can see this. Now we're going to have to uh, quench it. Okay, the density and the molarity of hydrochloric acid. I got this from uh, Wikipedia. And this is for 10%. All right, a solution of 10%. <clears throat> so what do I do? I take 1,000 milliliters because this is per liter, right? There's 2.87 moles in one liter. There's 1,000 milliliters in a liter, so I divide it, right? Let's pretend this is three, okay? So that means there's three moles in a whole liter. If I divide it by three, that's three parts. And if there's three moles, that means each part has a, has a mole, right? So I divide it by the three, and I get this. 348 milliliters. That means if I take this times this, it'll equal that, right? Because that's how many, let's say three times that equals that. So this must have one mole in it, right? So we also know that concentrated hydrochloric acid you get at the store, like Lowe's, has a little more than one mole in every hundred milliliters of acid. So what am I going to do to make my 10% hydrochloric acid? I'm going to get 100 milliliters of acid concentrated that I got at Lowe's. We know there's a mole in it, right? Now how much, this is what you need for 10% solution. You need to have this much liquid with one mole of HCl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 100 milliliters, I'm going to pour it in half of this, okay, because this is 348 afterwards. When these mix, you can't mix volumes like 2 plus 2. It doesn't work out that way. So you have to add a little bit of water, add the acid to a little bit of water, and then add more in to make it go all the way up to 348 milliliters. Then you will have your 10% solution. A third of it I'm going to use to quench, a third of it to destroy the magnesium metal that's left over, and a third of it to wash the ether. Although this last third, I forgot to do with that. So I still have the third of hydrochloric acid I didn't use. So I'm going to make my 10% hydrochloric acid. I have 90 to 100 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid here. 100 milliliters of cold water here. I'm going to mix them together. Then I'm going to add more water so that this goes up to 348 to 350 milliliters, okay? That way I'll know that it's 10%. I'll put this hydrochloric acid in the ice box, took it down below zero, and I split it up into three, three almost equal parts. You know, I'm not being exact about it. We only made a third of a mole, remember? We didn't make a full mole. So, and we made a mole of uh, HCl though, remember? So this is a third of a mole right here. So that should equate to making our tetrahedral intermediate into the uh, goes up. I should have used more diethylether, but okay, well, I'm going to pour it into here then. Oh crap, it's boiling. I forgot about the magnesium. Since the magnesium's in there, when I put the hydrochloric acid in, it's making hydrogen. The hydrogen is splurting out, like spraying out of the bottle, carrying, you know, HCl with it, uh, you know, on my hand and that. That's why I stopped. Oh, it's stinking up the place.